Welcome to the World of Cafe Podcast, of Pro Wrestling Podcast. I am your host tonight, Dan the Man, with my two good buddies, Venomous One, Nick Venom, Staggered Lee Crocker, and gracing us with his presence, tonight's guest, Dynamite David Party. How are you this evening? That's right, the maniacal maestro of the microphone, lock, cock, and ready to rock here in the world of kayfabe. Get ready, all you dynamaniacs out there. It's going to be a wild and woolly trip here tonight as we go deep, deep into the world of kayfabe. <laughs> all right, so on tonight's show, we will go over a couple topics tonight, such as our thoughts on the AEW full gear. Uh, the big story coming out of the weekend is the challenge from Kenny Omega to Will Ospreay at Wrestle Kingdom 19 Let's and go. the latest uh, info video gameplay on AEW Fight Forever. How is everybody this evening? Sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the entire, <laughs> the, the, enti- the entire show is sick. I don't know how this happened, but... Yeah. Man, we all came down with a virus. No tell it started, it started with, with Dynamite, then it started with me, and then, oh, yeah. it, then Joey, then Dan now. So was, <laughs> you know what? We, we may all feel like crap, but the show must go on. We're here to have fun. Let's fucking kill it. Plus, you know, I got the dual champs right here. You know what I'm saying? Dual champ. Dual champ. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Nikki two hey, belts. you know what? I'm going to get another belt one day. Nikki two belts? You can't, oh, you can't, oh, you can't oh, stop this belt right here. Okay, Nikki Bella. You can look, but you can't touch. <laughs> Nikki yeah. two belts hanging out with his wang out already. We just got That's the show right. started. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, what is up, Mr. Dynamite Dave, my dude? Yeah, normally I would be starting off the show, but my voice is shot right now because, man, like, we, we had a hell of a show. We had a hell of a... Uh, a wrestling event, uh, seasons beating six, uh, for my for my boys of Golf State Wrestling down in Morgan City. Uh, they had a good crowd, good capacity crowd. Unfortunately, Dynamite Dave couldn't make it uh, due to an illness, which sucks. Which uh, how are you feeling today, bro? Man, it feels like I'm finally getting on the backside of it a little bit. But yeah, it's uh, it's been rough, man. Oh, my chest real bad. Couldn't take a breath. <clears throat> cough and there was just no way I could get out there and cough and hack all over the crowd and just couldn't perform at the, at the level that I'm used to. So I, at the last minute, as much as it pained me, I just, I had to pull out. I got, couldn't do the show. Just one of those things. The cold weather comes through here in South Louisiana. Either ready for it or you're not. Sometimes you get the crud up in there sucking snot for days yep. and just, you had to shut her down, man. Hell yeah. But, um, I, I was I was pretty pumped up for the show. Um, I almost didn't make it because of a similar reason. It's like I woke up with like a sore throat. I had like a little bit of something, but it kind of went away. And I told my buddy Robbie, I'm like, yeah, let's let's go check this out. Let's have a good time. And I mean, it's good you went because I'll tell you from a from an announcer from a performer standpoint, being out there in the ring, there's nothing better than the energy you get from the audience. And me, I'm a big energy guy. I go out in front of a crowd. If the crowd's kind of low key, I'll try to bring them up. If they don't get up, ah, you know, you're gonna get what you're giving me. Now, when I've got that crowd and the crowd's hot and they're eating every, you know, they're, they're eating out of the palm of your hand, they're they're buying everything you're selling. That's when you really crank it up. And you reach, turn it, bitch, all the way up to eleven. You know, that's when you really get fired up. So the energy from the crowd, you fans out there cutting up, man, having a good time. That's what makes the night. That's what it's all about. The guys go out there perform. They bust their ass to entertain you guys. Same thing with me. So you showing up sick, you guys out there cutting up like you do, man. That's what makes the night. And bro, it it took a lot. I, when I tell you a lot, I mean, I mean, bro, it, it was like, whoo! By the time I got back home, I was lightheaded. Yeah, and I had McDonald's. That wasn't even good. Normally, I, I, I chow down <laughs> on some McDonald's and it was normally good, but for some reason, it wasn't good. Like, man, man, I've been on so much cold medicine and this, that, and the other. I couldn't find my ass with both hands and a GPS. But I mean, but, I have been out of it. But Go yeah, re- wrestling during the COVID era on TV showed how important the crowd is. <laughs> Yes. Whoa, you yes. guys never lying, bro. Hey, for, first of all, really quick, I got to give Nick a shout out on that hoodie he's wearing, bro. Nice. nice. Somebody actually thought it was Gulf Coast Wrestling, which is like, no, it's Game Changer Wrestling. I mean, it's a blatant <laughs> ECW ripoff, well, but it's still good. So apparently before it was Gulf State Wrestling, it was called Gulf Coast Wrestling. Mm-hmm. That was the original name. Uh, they changed the name recently. I, I don't know like how long it was whenever they changed it. So About two years ago. 
Yeah, no, I, used okay. to have, I used to have a buddy that used to commentate for Gulf Coast Wrestling. His name was Double B Billy Boudreaux. Ooh. This, was, this was years and years ago. I wish, I wish I knew what he was up to. Um, yeah. through, him, through him, I got to talk to Axel Rotten and Jerry Lynn on the phone before. That was super cool. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. That's awesome. Those Boudreaux are prominent with the ring announcement. We got Bryce Boudreaux out of Lake Charles, does Good a lot of him. wrestling ring announcing as well. I'll say, I'll say this. No disrespect to Bryce. Bryce is a good as good announcing. He's good, but man, ain't nobody get more hyped than, than you, bro. And, I, and I'm gonna say it. Like from the moment I saw you, I'm like, dude, look at this guy. This guy over here got the whole Jimmy Hart setup over here with his jacket, <laughs> coming out to ACDC's TNT. Like you can't get any more metal than that. Like you know what I'm saying? The dude's got his own confetti. I'm like, man, this dude, this dude's awesome. I love. I actually guy. got, I actually got to ask you a question. I seen your profile picture on Facebook. You actually um, did ring announcing on Showtime. Is that true? Yes, sir. Live national television with Showtime, Showbox. Done that several times. I've also worked with uh, the NCAA Final Four. Been on That's national cool. television many times with mixed wow. martial arts. Yeah, man. Old wow. Dynamite's been around the block once or twice. Got the T-shirt and brought it home. See guys, That's cool. <laughs> see guys, I got a good hookup. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know with good company. You know, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm sure I can speak for everybody else, but I'm stoked for this show, dude. I'm so hyped right now. So to start to start off the topics, uh, it's like what Dan said. We have Will Ospreay versus Kenny Omega at Russell Kingdom, uh, the next the up up and coming Russell Kingdom. Bro, I'm hyped. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Are, are you into like today's current wrestling uh, day, uh, dynamite? Yeah, man. Kenny Omega, one of the best. I mean, dude's fantastic. Osprey. If you go back, you know, a lot of the traditional wrestlers hated on it. But yep. when you had Will Osprey and your boy put on the match not that long ago, man, I mean, it, it just changed the shape of high spot wrestling for sure. But, man, you you got to love it. The athleticism these guys go out there and put on. And Kenny Omega, dude, I mean, the guy burns the house down. And when you've got those two that are getting ready to step into the ricochet, that's the name I was looking for earlier, when you had Osprey and Ricochet burn it down a couple Ooh. years ago, man. Oh, my Classic. goodness. If you weren't up on the, the edge of your seat just jumping up and down, screaming your head off, something's wrong with you. And yeah. now you've got Kenny Omega and Will Osprey. The, the, the bad thing about a match like that is you get so much anticipation and so much expectation. It is so hard for those guys to go out there and live up to the hype and the pressure that we as fans put them under. So the match should be just a five-star knockout for sure, but it's so hard to live up to what we all want to see because we've seen what they've given us in the past. Well, see, well, I, com I completely agree with you, and I think they're going to go out there and blow the roof off the Tokyo Dome. Oh, yeah. And just think now, and even Nick can agree with this, just imagine Kenny Omega now. He's 100%. Yeah. You know, he's not dealing with no injuries. He's 100%, dude. I am. Bro, I am so stoked. And, and then you have Kenny Omega saying he's going over to Save New Japan. And then you have Will Ospreay saying you need to save your own company. So there's yeah, a whole feud between AEW versus New Japan even now. And, well, you and, know what I'm surprised? And... and, and and at the media scrum, there was talks about potentially having more. I, this was, I don't know if this was only, this might be the only AW, but might on there. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Might only be the only match on Wrestle Kingdom. But Tony did say that they are working on it, having more on well, Wrestle we Kingdom. Are, well, we are getting FTR defending the World Tag Team titles at Wrestle Kingdom. Which is oh, great because oh, I, I they're actually gonna, they're gonna oh wow that's a, who wins the world tag champ that's new to tag me team. that's new to me I didn't hear that one well FTR I mean I, I I would definitely say this and I'm sure everybody can agree with me they are definitely the Kenny Omegas of the tag team division right oh, now absolutely like, the, yeah, this but year where alone been? this where year alone been? this year alone they've won the Ring of Honor tag titles they won the AAA tag titles they have won. Uh, what else they want? The the uh, IWGP Heavyweight IWGP. Tag Team Championships. Like these dudes are absolutely bona fide stars, and it's a damn shame that WWE kind of like mistreated them in a way. I mean, yeah, they had their great matches with DIY and and Office of Pain, but it's like, man, them now, <coughs> awesome. You know what I'm saying? Dude, those guys brought back traditional tag yes. team wrestling, yes. and yes. they brought it back in the yes. modern area. 
the modern era where traditional tag team wrestling's kind of poo-pooed. So they brought back what you saw in the Midnight Express, yes. the Steiner Brothers, Arn Anderson, Larry Zabisco. They brought that style of tag team wrestling back, yeah. but yet they added the modern flair to it. The, you, don't, you don't get any better than those guys right now. So l- let me ask you a question, Dynamite. If you can take if you can take one team from the past to go against FTR, what would it be? My choice would be Arn and Tully versus FTR. You can't beat that because you can see, you know, they based a lot of what they do, the quick tags in and out, you know, going yeah. after one Barty potty, going after what the old horseman used to do. But another yeah. one that I would like to see, man, would, yeah, definitely be the Midnight Express. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the guys still that look, They're still I, wrestling. I, really I underrated through the annals of time, man. He's one of the greatest pro wrestlers ever. Freaking bro, beautiful I Bobby Eaton, man. I, I would have loved to. Uh, hang on, Joey. I would have loved to see FTR versus the Brain Busters. Ah, good one as well. But, I mean, you that's Arn and Tully. Arn and Tully. Yeah. But, if yeah. you remember, they had some bangers with the Rockers, man. When the yes. Rockers were first coming up. I was about up, to say the Rockers. Marty Jannetty, Shawn Michaels. Yeah, them and the Brain Busters had some real bangers. This, Absolutely. This is going to be out there, but e- for ECW Eliminators versus FTR. Oh, yeah, you're Bro, right. Yeah, I was you're thinking right. that one. Cronus, Perry, Saturn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, let's, just, let's just call it a space of spade. FTR versus Red Dragon. Where you at? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Kyle O'Reilly, Bobby Fish. The Eliminators 2.0. You know what I'm saying? That's how I see them as. I see mm-hmm. Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. When they were on top in NXT, man, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, oh my God. You just and it's a shame that what they're at right now. Like money. I wish they can come back to NXT. Well, you see, uh, you see Bobby Fish went into boxing now, right? Yeah, yes. he he won his he yeah. won his first one. It, his That's debut cool. fight. Yeah. So but yeah, uh switching gears, talk about AEW fight, uh fight forever. Full gear. Full gear, man. Whew, I didn't watch it. I just kind of saw the updates because, I mean, I was at the wrestling show. So, <laughs> man, I'm, we're just going to clear the elephant in the room because me and Dan both, both saving this. And I can't do it. I, I can't do it. I'm going to try. New. Oh, that was good. New world heavyweight mother effing champion. Maxwell Jacob Freeman. MJF. He's better than you, and you and know you it. know it exactly. You know it. And, MJF uh, is just a total package. He can put it on. He can perform in the ring, guys. He can perform on the microphone. He's got the persona. He is the total package. You don't have a better flag standard no. bearer for AEW right now than MJF. I, I, and if you catch you guys that's floating around out there, as soon as he won the match, he's in the back. He walks up to a couple guys he's like, "Fuck you! I'm the champ. The fucking <laughs> champ is out." Yeah. That, I mean, that, dude is money. Dude yeah, is that, money. That guy's yeah. that guy's been money since he uh, debuted in like CZW and all that back in the Indies. Yes. He he, yes. he like had this character set when he came debuted wrestling. It's crazy on how much he just stayed the same and was able to go like skyrocket to the moon. <laughs> Not only yeah. that, like the fact he went to media scrum, he put a Jim Cornette, he put a thank you, fuck you, bye. Like that needs to be a T-shirt. Like yes, yes, thank um, you, um, that needs bye. to be a T-shirt. That's got to be. T- if you're pro and tees, make that shirt. I mean, you got to obviously blur out the fuck, but, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, dude, this dude's money. And it's like the fact that he won it, we all knew it was going to happen. We all knew he was going to beat Moxley. Moxley wasn't going to hold that title much longer. I mean, he did what he did. He, he held the title because of obvious reasons, because CM Punk was burying the whole talent. And it's like to hear that fuck CM Punk chant, like me being a CM Punk fan, me being a fan of his. I felt that. And it's like, you know what? Yeah, fuck CM Punk. Because you're yeah, gonna bury him. you're gonna bury a bunch of talent like Darby Allen, like I can't believe I'm saying this. Sammy Guevara, MJF, Jungle Boy, Britt Baker, I, Hangman Page. Yeah, basically the pillars of AEW. I, I, exactly. I, I don't know like, what oh, well, I'm I'm better than all of them. <laughs> it's like, come on, bro. I really want AEW to make some statement about punk because they keep on releasing new merch for him. Not only that, <laughs> uh, apparently he was released, not released, uh, he was, his character got cut in the Fight Forever game. No, his, char- his character's still in the game. Oh, it is? Okay. It's still in the game Good. because like, like Davey said, it'd be way too expensive for them to remove it now. Yeah. And I mean, He's going to be still in the, the game. 
That was one bus I was never able to get on board, even in his big run 10, 15 years ago in WWE, the pipe bomb interview, all that. I never gave two squirts of piss about CM Punk. Never liked the dude. Never did. Never was a fan. So here's my thing, right? It was 2011, and I was getting so close to being like, I'm done wrestling. You know what I mean? It's John Cena every week. It's like, oh, Super Cena's winning. He's beating up the Nexus. It's bullshit this, bullshit that. And it's like, you know, what's going to stop this dude? Like, I'm getting tired Sometimes of this. that breath of fresh air will bring you right back. You know what man. I'm saying? Like, Impact was doing all right with Bobby Roode as his champion, which, you know, which I think had a very underrated uh, title reign, in my opinion. But uh, CM Punk faced John, uh, John Cena and Money in the Bank in Chicago. Had what I thought was an absolute five-star banger. It was an amazing match. Only to have CM Punk win the title and then leaving. Leaving WWE and then coming back like what few few, few weeks later, yeah. yeah. So I definitely dig it. I I that got me back into wrestling. Seeing him come back is like, hey man, that's cool. And then it's like last year comes back, bro. Like Dan, Dan is the, one of the very first people I texted. I cried. I had tears yeah. of joy of this man mm-hmm. coming back after seven and a half years of not wrestling. Saying I'm done with wrestling. This is BS. This is crap. I hate wrestling, all that. And then AEW comes back. Now I'll give you a similar moment. Now, guys, I see wrestling through a little bit of a different lens than you do. I'm quite a bit older than you guys. I grew up during the golden era, right? Right. So on Monday Nitro, when finally, after all the bullshit, when they the the four horsemen are in their tuxedos and Arn Anderson, oh, yeah, by the way, I forgot. He brings out Ric Flair. I'm at a buddy of mine's house, man. We're all sitting around drinking. We're 19, 20 years old, something like that. Freaking Ric Flair comes out and just like Nick said, stood up. I've got tears in my oh, effing man. eyes. And my buddy's like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? I'm like, bro, y'all know I love me some wrestling. Woo! And just, that was an emotional moment. A character that you invested so much in to see them come back and have that semi-real moment where you kind of blur the lines between what is story, what is reality. You knew there was some heat there. You knew there was passion there. So same thing. That's how I felt that night with Flair, just like you're saying with CM Punk. Yeah. Well, speaking of what Nick was talking about, so the crowd chanting fuck CM Punk, they're in New Jersey. I wonder how it's going to be like this Wednesday when they are in Chicago at the oh, Nap Arena. Gonna be How's that too. crowd going to be? Are they going to shit all over AEW? They love man. Punk in Chicago, man. They love Bro, Phil That's Albert. what I'm saying. Uh, if but, the Young Bucks come out? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe they'll maybe they'll, they'll throw Colt Cabana out there, hoping it'll save the moment. <laughs> well, well, there was a Colt Cabana chant at full gear, but it definitely wasn't as loud as the fuck CM Punk. Yeah. Chant. But what is the Chicago fans gonna chant? Fuck Omega and fuck the Bucks. I like, think so. I, dude, think, I think they're gonna shit all over them. And the thing is, like, bro, probably are. Shout out to is it Kansas? Kansas. For carry loaning, on my wayward son. For loaning the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. Carry on my wayward son. Bro, I freaking pop Because it was yes. rumored. They were trying to get rights of the song. They were trying to get the rights of it. They couldn't get it. And sure enough, they had the little, the little like, promo thing at the top. It says, yeah. carry on, carry on. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? Why did they say I carry on? Sure enough, lights goes out. You see them. This, like, you couldn't get any more better than that. The silhouette yeah. of them. The elite in the background, Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, and it's like that song pops, and it's like, bro, holy shit! It, it's like who who would have ever thought that them coming out to Kansas would be so awesome? And and speaking, yeah. of, and speaking of awesome stuff, I think it's time if we get the Omi Goose to pop. But Dan, yes. even though I'm sick, I'm doing the best I can to keep Come myself on. in composure. Give it to me, Daddy. Let's give yeah. a sickly pop. Ah, oh, me gusta. There it is. There it is. Yeah, you pour that. Bottle by. I don't know if Joey's completed the new uh, me gusta, which is. But yeah, yeah, they they said that that themes. Uh, Tony's on the media scrum said that that would <coughs> that he'd be open to using that theme in the future also. So it's not it's not a yeah. one time thing. So you think it might be a permanent thing? You think you uh, might be like may, okay, we're not doing yeah, PTE, we use it. Yeah, just for, for the yeah, just for the elite. During big matches, it depends maybe. on the deal ooh, they can get. Ooh, I mean, it ooh. gets expensive to get licensed music sometimes. Yeah. 
Trust me, I know I've talked look to at, the ACDC management to get my own shit. And yeah, no, that shit's expensive. Look at da- look at Brian Danielson. But if you catch the right Europe. deal, then yeah, to where it makes sense, you know, sometimes the artist will give you the, the proper deal with it to where it's not that bad. Right. So I got a, I got a little comment about entrance music. Nick oh. and Joey, you might be able to agree with me. Do you think that when Omega comes out at, at the Tokyo Dome, he's going to come out to his um, original theme when he was in Bullet Club? The Devil Sky? Devil Sky. If he, let me tell you something right now. All right. You know what? Damn yeah, belt. I'll tell you something right now. All right, camera. Oh, if shit, he just comes out to Devil Sky, if he comes out to Devil Sky, what a cave is going to be exploded with my yeah. happiness. Yes. And maybe because some more. Uh, the, reason more. Why, the reason why I say that is because when you watched him come out to carry on my wayward son, he didn't have the Titan Tron video of his AEW thing. When it said Kenny Omega on the screen, it was the IWGP um, video of when it says Kenny Omega on the screen. Bro, if he comes out to that, man, and that's my all-time favorite Kenny Omega theme. Like, you can't yeah. go any better than that. And what's he going to dress up as? Terminator. Dude, bro. Terminator. If, if he comes up with Terminator, I will <laughs> it mark would, it. It would make so sense. <laughs> oh, man. But real quick, as we are uh, about to hit commercial break, commercial break city. Um, so, yeah, bro. So what got you into doing, like, pro wrestling, like, being as an announcer? Well, believe it or not, when I was first getting into announcing, when I first getting into mixed martial arts, boxing, stuff like that, yeah. a little piss hand, nobody. I was good friends with Must. Thing, Mike, an old wrestling promoter by the name of Mardi Gras, uh, Minotaur, a lot of those guys hanging out with them back then. Jazz, you know, former WWE Women's yeah. Champion, so on and so oh, forth. Wow. Was hanging out with them, and they would always, hey, you want to come down and do one of our shows? So, yeah, I'd come down and announce for them, and anytime they had a show in town, they would always say, hey, we got tickets for you. We'll take care of you. So now that I've become somewhat of a star myself, whatever you want to call it, I always hook those guys up. I throw them tickets to any of my events. They want to come get them cage side, ringside, just to kind of always pay back. You know, they were good to me when I was a nobody. And now that I'm the name and the draw that I am, I always like to give back to those guys that took care of me because they knew my first love was always pro wrestling. I can sit there and talk wrestling with guys all day, all night. <clears throat> but the money and the, the, the you know, the, the fame at the, at the regional level was kind of going towards the mixed martial arts and boxing and stuff like that. So that's why I went heavy in that direction. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and shout this out, man. Rest in peace. Anthony Rumble Johnson, man. What do you think about that? I knew Rumble real well. We, uh, we hung out several times, man. I met him a few years back at a bodybuilding show. Actually, I was hosting down in West Palm beach and we got to be pretty good friends after that. Yeah, man, it was a shock because he was a legitimate good dude. Really, yeah. really was. And he made so many friends yeah. across the industry in mixed martial arts. I mean, professional fighting, period. So, yeah, a lot of people hurt by that. Like the guy that owns Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, BKFC, Mr. David Feldman. Mm. And Rumble Johnson was at his wedding. A okay. uh, good buddy of mine, Scott Barrett, he trains a lot of guys that are in the UFC right now. I mean, they were buddies. Guy that lives over here by us, Nick and Slidell, uh, Rich Clemente. Rich fought. Anthony Rumble Johnson in the UFC. I think it was UFC, shit, I want to say 67, something like that. They fought each other. So, I mean, Rumble just impacted a lot of lives, went through a lot of different transitions in his own career. So, you hate to see anybody go that young, but especially somebody who was so beloved in the sport. Speaking of deaths, we might as well address the, the green and white elephant in the room. The Power Ranger. <sighs> Jason David Frank, better on the known the world as the Green Ranger, Tommy, the Green Ranger, the Red Ranger, the White Ranger, the Black Ranger. Tommy Oliver has passed, hurt. tragically passed away, bro. Like that one. Man, you can that take one, a high price sometimes, guys. It really can. We get we get Kevin Conroy last week. We yeah. honored Kevin Conroy last Monday night. And then now we have to honor Tommy. Oh, it was last Friday night. No, well, we honored him. Remember, oh, we yeah. honored him last yeah. last Monday night. I'm too stupid. Duh, duh. But yeah, man, JDF. Dude. And I, so here's the thing: I had three opportunities to meet this man. 2014 at Comic Con New Orleans, I met for some reason the lead, the lead singer of Sugar Ray, Mark McGrath, which coincidentally is actually a really cool dude. Was going to be JDF though, but I didn't have enough money to like, hey, let's go because I didn't bring that much. Following year, I met Kevin Conroy, as what Dan just mentioned, the voice of Batman. 
I met him and almost had him do a voicemail for my phone to be my voicemail operator. That close, and he didn't do it. I'm sure he was super nice, dude. Oh, so he loved my costume. He loved the costume I did. I did Assassin's Creed that year. Yeah. Had an opportunity to meet JDF, right? The line was too long. Fast forward to this year, I met Sting, which then I met you know that because you were one of the very first ones to see that. Had an opportunity to meet JDF. Unfortunately, he couldn't make it because at the time he was going through a divorce of his wife and he was also doing a shoot. Uh, he was shooting his movie, The Legend of the White Dragon. Uh, okay. I think, or the dragon. No, you're right. The Legend dragon, of the White, White dragon. dragon or something like that. Legend of the White Dragon. Yeah. And sure enough, I mean, the dude, the dude commits suicide. Oh, dude. What the hell have I done here? Uh-oh. It's some of the most, the problem is, it's some of the most happiest people on the planet are the most saddest deep down. And the dude, the dude, like, literally said, I can never get tired of being called somebody's hero. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that right there is super cool. Like I even told that to Stink. I'm like Stink to be honest. Like you're one of my childhood heroes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what the hell has happened here? <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> look, look like lost my boys. Dan doesn't want to have technical issues. On uh, David Hardy's end. There we go. All right, I'm back. There yeah. he is. There's a the man of the hour. Yeah, we're we about to. We gotta. We're about to hit, hit commercial break city. So look, you want to hear a funny story about uh meeting me one of me one of my favorites, RVD Rob Van Dam. Oh, you lucky bastard! Woo. Look, we go down and watch ECW at the Hilario Center in New Orleans. Afterwards, me and a bunch of my friends we go down to Bourbon Street. We're on Bourbon Street, hanging and banging, cutting up, having a good time. Banging and, banging. and I notice this big guy coming down, pretty big dude, ponytail. And I'm like, oh, holy shit! That is fucking RVD. Like, yeah, dude, look. He's like, that is RVD. So we run into a bar real quick and we grab these little Budweiser Drake coasters or whatever. <laughs> Just to have something for the dude to sign, right? So he starts signing those and we're marking out. Like, oh, shit, dude, this is fucking RVD. So he's signing this for us. And next thing you know, he starts kind of looking around, being all kind of suspicious. Finally, he holds his, hey, you boys know where I can go. Uh, Ooh, the guiltiest find, charge. I, I 2000 find a little something. We're like, dude, what? We like, buddy of mine just so happened to have a little something, something. So we gave it to RVD right there on Bourbon Street. Dude hung out with us for like 20, 30 minutes shooting his shit. Dude, that was so cool. I mean, That's this is a awesome. long time ago, but yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> Live again. All right, guys, we're back from our very brief and short commercial break here with Dynamite David Hardy. Um, man, let's continue on with that RVD story, man, before we were just so rudely and technically cut off. So, yeah, man, like I say, he walks up to us. We're getting him to sign the coasters. And next thing you know, he kind of starts looking around to see what's going yeah. on. And then he leans in. He's like, hey, uh, you boys know where I can find a little, uh, <clears throat> like, <"Holy> <laughs> I look at my boy Jax. He's like, you know what, dude, 
This is all we got. It's yours, man. So we give you the, the, the little bit of puff up we had. We give it to the dude. He's like, hell yeah. So we hang out with him about 20, 30 minutes. He rolls out. We're all still in awe. Oh, we just hung out with fucking RVD. Then about five minutes later, it hits us. Oh, we just gave him all of our smoke. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really cool. The first oh, five man. minutes later, it's like, wait a minute. What did we just do? <laughs> now we're going over the end. So it was still... I've met a lot of guys, man, but that was one of the coolest ones meeting him. And it's so much cooler, I think, sometimes when you meet him as a fan to oppose is when I've got to meet a lot of guys hanging out, you know, backstage as part of the show. That's cool as well. But yeah. that just random fan interaction, like just happened to bump into him on Bourbon Street. To me, that's still the coolest, man. So I've never had a really cool interaction with wrestlers like on that level. Like that would be awesome. But uh, I've told this story multiple times to these two guys here. I'll never forget it. So back when um, RVD was the uh, TNA world champ. Yeah. Uh, so our, uh, TNA would do a short house show run just to kind of test if they would do good with untelevised events. Right. Well, um, I went to a, a TNA house show here in Houston where I live at. Right. And I got front row seats. It was super cool. But um, I, I never got to go to an ECW event. I was too young. But I remember when um, Van Dam was coming out, you know, ECW, he's coming, just slap everybody's hands, right? And do, and do the RVD thing. So I was okay, kind of terrible. in the corner. I was in the corner on uh, in ringside. And he comes over <laughs> to us and he high fives me. And I swear to God, he looks me dead right in the eyes. He goes, who the fuck am I? And I say, RVD, RVD. And he gave me that. That RVD like just swagger high five and just walk. <laughs> I I so wanted that to be an ECW moment. That was my ECW moment. It was so hell cool. yeah. I'll never hell forget yeah. that. I got to host a TNA show at the UNO Lakefront Arena in New Orleans one time. Jerry no Borash shit. Wow. Yeah, it was a house show. Borash was sick. Couldn't really do it. I got invited by some folks at the Louisiana Boxing and Wrestling Commission. Bro. I was a big wrestling fan. Said, like, yeah, come on down and hang out in the back with all of us. Dude, it's so cool. I'm in the back with the Dudley boys, Angelina Love. Matt Morgan was there. Me and Samoa Joe hung out Ooh. all night. Yeah, dude. Back Jeff Jarrett was still there and everything. Yeah. But so, it was so uh, cool, so I got to go out, and I was the ring announcer for TNA that <laughs> night at a house show, man. So, have you ever met a um, mainstream wrestler that kind of rubbed you the wrong way? Have you ever had that? Uh, let's see. Did, 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 Good question. No, most of, them, most of the ones I've been around, yes, I have. Lex Luger. Lex Luger is a dick. Really? Wow! It, it, Lex it, Luger it, it, always wow! Luger will be a dick. <laughs> so, so actually, oh, I, no, on. On. I mean, hold bless on. his soul. You know, he's he's in the wheelchair and all now, and has had the, the atrophy and the issues. Well, if, back if in the that's day, a shoot, brother. <laughs> back in if the day, yeah, Lex was a dick. If you can elaborate a little bit without going too far into it, like what did he do that constipated him being a dick? It was just one of those you were shocked by it because at the time he was playing the face role. So you go in, you know, he's the good guy, and you walk up, and you want to talk to him. He's, Fuck away from me. Who, you know, didn't want any fans around him. Just got pissed off. Leave me be. Was not a people person at all. Where some of the guys wow. who play the biggest assholes in the ring, you meet them out in person. Cool yeah. as can be. Like Mark Lamonico, Bubba Ray Dudley, that dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. Don't piss him off now. Yeah, dude. you hear nothing Ooh. but horror stories about that dude. Dude's got a temper. Do not piss him off. Don't go, don't go walking up to Bubba Ray thinking, oh, hey, what's up? It's Bubba Ray. He'll slap the shit out of you. But if you approach him right... <laughs> If you approach him right with the certain modicum of respect, yeah, he's a he's, he's a good guy, good guy to hang out with, man. Did you watch? Uh, what was it? Oh, was it uh, Overdrive? Yeah, Impa Impact Impact's pay per view, bro. So basically, uh, Bully Ray or Bubble Ray, Bully Ray turned turned on Josh Alexander, and then to the point where he grabbed his wife and almost gave her a spiked power drive on the concrete floor, like. Bro, if that's not heat, I don't know what is. <clears throat> I don't think there's ever been anybody better in the business of drawing heat than Bubba. Well, I still, ah, I, hold, on, hold on. No, he's right. I still think, I still think the greatest moment of heat in any promo, I don't give a fuck what promotion it is, is ECW Heat Wave 99, where Bubba Ray Dudley cut that promo on that girl in the crowd, and he was like, look, Here's a girl with his, her mom that taught her how to suck dick. <laughs> Dude, that is the greatest <laughs> shit I've ever seen. Heat. 
Dude, Al Wright just fucking I'll fearless, you up, man. He absolutely was. Now, so I actually have two wrestlers that kind of shocked me. I was like, all right, cool, whatever. Um, one of them being, I want to say Lex Luger, but Luger was like super cool. And this was like this year, right? So I met. Yeah, you met him at the WrestleCon event. Right. I met Diamond. Much Cage. different dude now. Much oh, different yeah, much dude different. now. Much different. Ted DiBiase, on the other hand, Ooh. that dude is a dick. Oh, like, really? Super. Ladies, don't get offended by this. Cunt. Oh. Super <laughs> dick. Like, in, in what well, he way? got Well, he got caught for uh, uh, embezzling a fraud or whatever with the state of. I don't remember what state that was. So, yeah, he's a pastor, preacher now, does the whole church thing. But look, that dude was a booger sugar fiend back in the day, man. <laughs> I like the way you said that. Booger I mean, sugar fiend. Booger sugar fiend. <laughs> Woo, so anyway. Old white girl. So, oh, my Lord. Dave, but yeah, Dave but, knows that but yeah, I saw them. I was oh, just going to say, he was charged with um, embezzling millions of dollars. Ted DiBiase, the Mississippi State uh, in Mississippi. So both, oh, that's killer. That's the TNA house show that I hosted. Woo! If you look in the background, oh, that's a baby dynamite Jordan. right there. What else do you got? Do you have any other pictures you can show us? Oh yeah, man. Let me uh, oh, let me flip a through a couple right here. here. Samoa go. Joe seems like he would be a cool person. To, uh, Samoa Joe, my buddy awesome. Sonny met him, and he was another one cool. of my favorites, man. Samoa Joe. Absolutely love Joe. I've watched him uh, compete in WWE. He should absolutely get amazing. Yeah, Samoa Joe deserves more credit than what he gets. Yes, he is. Like he, he is. deserves to have more respect. Yeah. Now that he's the TNT champ, which I'm gonna be real, TNT champion don't mean shit. No, it doesn't. Not anymore. It really doesn't. But the fact Dude. that he holds it now, dude, this is gonna be a bit better run than Warlow. Warlow. You know. Well, I mean? you know. There's oh, Dynamite there's Bubba Ray right there. A young <laughs> Dynamite. Very young Dynamite. Baby, baby face Dynamite over that's here. Baby, that's baby face Dynamite. Yeah, Holy it was cool. Shit. I mean, I'm in the locker room with them, helping them. You know, I'm pulling their boots. Uh, you see he's got the old uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling say, jacket on right there. Oh, that had cool, to be yeah. about, what, 2007? 2000? Ah, yes, it's yeah, been a while, did, man. When yeah. they did Global, Dy- or Global Impact. Yeah. Let's see. Here's uh, myself and Jazz and a lady she wrestled that night over here in Slidell. There okay. you see her husband, Rodney Mack, That's behind Rodney me. Mack. Yeah, there's, also, there's the old promoter, Rodney Rodney Marty Graw. So, fun fact that now that you mentioned Rodney Mack, and I'm going to get on my Ted DiBiase story in just a minute, but now that you bring up Rodney Mack, so my girlfriend's father actually went Axel. to high school with Rodney Mack's dad. Really? Or something like that. Or they might have known each other for like whenever they did the chicken fights. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, needless to say, they know each other. They're very familiar with each other. And my girlfriend's father just so happens to know, personally know Rodney Mac. That's a cool. young Rodney Mac right that's there. That's a small world kind of thing, Nick. Yeah. It's a small world, you know what I mean? And I have him as a friend on Facebook, and I've actually had an idea to kind of have him on the show. But I don't know how you would how how you he would react. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you know what, guys? Hey, Joey, uh, have you heard anything back from um, like the RVD thing? And no, um, no, okay. <laughs> it's like no. That's really Not random happening. to bring. That's really on. random to bring up to the show. <laughs> uh, yeah, wait till after the show. Too stupid. <laughs> Man, starstruck over here. We we got we got Rodney Mack over here temporarily on the show. <clears throat> no, but uh, my story with Teddy Biasi is. So obviously, you know, I met him this year at, at the WrestleCon down in uh, uh, Gonzalez. We had a wrestling show, right? I don't know. I was was the you, ring were announcer. you there for that one? I was the ring announcer. That's true. Yeah, you were there. I forgot about that. I said, That's damn, true. for Ron Simmons. Yeah. His microphone wouldn't work. Bro, I remember damn. that. <laughs> well, well, it's the big show. Anyway, so yeah. So met Ted DiBiase with my buddy Ray. My buddy Ray wanted to meet him. Like, I want to meet him, too, because it's like, hey, he's a heel. I'm a heel. Two heels unite. You know what I'm saying? And so, basically, he didn't even, like, he didn't, like, put his arm around me like, hey, let's take a picture. You know what I mean? Oh, I so. Yeah. And, basically, uh, just was like a dick. He just did this. 
Yeah, a lot of people complained about him that day. And it's like, damn, bro. Like, I thought you was cooler than this. Like, damn, bro. I guess it, I guess if I have actual money, I guess you will be bought. I don't know. Shit. But yeah, um, that was a cool event, though. You can't you can't deny it. Like, that show was awesome. DDP was super awesome. I think probably by far DDP was my favorite. Dude, that was so cool. The DDP gave me one hell of a compliment that day, and I've always been a huge fan. I was in the Superdome the night he turned on the NWO. And yes! Were you really? No! Oh, I was there that night, man. Hell yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was uh, what that was in the Cajun Dome, wasn't it? No, that was in, no, the, Superdome. That was in the Superdome. That was in the Superdome. Superdome. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Because they covered that on uh, the best of Nitro Volume 1. Because yeah. Eric Bischoff and uh, Ted DiBiase yeah, we're yeah. doing commentary. Yeah, I met uh, DDP in like 2000. Dude. Yeah, he was the nicest guy. He put me in the diamond cutter, and then he insisted to put my dad in the diamond cutter also for a photo. That's awesome. That's right. That's super <laughs> cool. Turn heel. Yeah, you know what? Speaking of DDP, man, I'm just I'm so glad that he's around, man. He saved you know Scott Hall and Jake the Snake. Who is yeah. that? Yeah, I was say, yeah, who's that? That's uh, Jesse Palmer from ESPN. I did the 2013. Oh, shit. Hey, Hell I yeah. Worked with, nice. I worked with ESPN Hell yeah. Well. Damn. I got crazy with all these goofy pictures. Trying to get back to I one. I see that, that bro. <laughs> Jesus. I was like, wait a minute. I knew that smile looked familiar. That smile looked familiar. But anyway, but um, but yeah, so basically my introduction w- with you was last year, last Cajun Heat. And uh, Cajun Heat last year was pretty good. But bro... I'm gonna be real. The reason, the real reason why I got you on the show, Cajun Heat of this year, bro. Cajun Heat this year was. Wah, it was good. Wah, 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 wah. Awesome. It was really good. Awesome, great show. I loved it, and it's like your energy, <coughs> and then that crowd, bro. Like the crowd alone, it was like what 1,200 people over there. It was about. I think we, yeah, I think we were around eleven seventy five, maybe closer to thirteen hundred. It was, it was uh it was it nice, was man. It really was. And that place can hold up to like fourteen hundred. <coughs> which, by the way, I see you met Mick Foley. Hell yeah, I'll be meeting him next year at uh the Lafayette Comic Con. Yeah, but, Foley's pretty cool, dude. <laughs> I heard like Joey said it. Joey said that he's been like super nice, dude, and like I've heard nothing but nice things about him. I'm also gonna be meeting Kevin Nash uh, that year as well. So, Kevin Nash is a gargantuan human being. I can about imagine. Dude, now, I've got a picture of him and Mustang. And Mustang's a big dude. Mustang's right, 6'3", right. about 235, raw muscle. Yeah. Kevin Nash, even at 50-something years old, makes Mustang look like, like a, a little kid. Yeah. So, basically, um, that show was amazing. I did the Penta L Batman, which, bro, everybody loved that. Like, even that was the awesome. People, Edie White was like, yo, it's Batman! I'm like, I mean, you're technically right. So, and I had the whole crowd going up and down, like doing the waves. Like, I think that crowd alone, just that was super awesome. You know Dude, what I'm that's saying? That's how big Kevin Nash is. Good that's him God. Like Jesus that, Christ, make Mustang look like a child. Mustang is 6'3, 235, Don't nothing but that. muscle. <laughs> and that's him next to Kevin Nash. I'll tell him that. <laughs> that's I how big Nash is, him. guys. He's a goddamn dinosaur. Oh, 6'11, like, 330. Did you uh have you ever asked him about the magic mic thing? No. I'm talking about Kevin Nash, not 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 Musty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nash been in a lot of movies, man. You know, he was in the uh, Ninja Turtles too. He was the yeah. super shredder. He was in the super Punisher shredder. with Thomas Jane. Yeah. And, Both uh, magic Mike movies, The Longest Yard. He's been in a lot of movies. Also yeah. Grandma's Boy. Yeah, and then, yeah, uh, Grandma's Boy. And, and Punisher, if I remember right, he was actually really stabbed in that. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. was. Hey, like, what are you um are you excited about the new uh Von Eric movie coming out? Yeah, they're filming that right down here by us. They were doing a lot of filming in Baton oh, Rouge shit. this past yeah. week. Your boy's in it. Your boy. Yeah, in he's it. Iron Claw. No, he's who is he? No, no the mo- no, the movie is called Iron Claw, mm-hmm. but he's so MJF is playing. I don't remember his name, but he was kind of one of the Von Erics that wasn't really a Von Eric. Yeah. He was kind of like brought in. Yeah, you got Zach Efron playing Carrie Von Eric. Carrie Von Eric. Yeah, Zach Ooh. blowing up, man. Look, put him on wait for about a year, year and a half. Yeah. You'll be surprised. I think he's going to do good. I think uh, he's got my reservations. 
<laughs> and you man, guys weren't around back then, but man, look, when that company was running big, WCCW, World Class Championship Wrestling, from the Sportatorium in Texas over there, man, that was as big as anything WWF ever thought to achieve right. before WWF got to their heights. And then Kerry would have been such a huge, huge star when they brought him over as the Texas Tornado, but a lot of people don't know he effed his foot up so bad in a motorcycle accident just after he got signed, he had a prosthetic foot. The whole time you're seeing him wrestle as the Texas Tornado in WWF, he had a fake foot. So yeah, really. it limited a lot of his in-ring ability because of that, because of the injury he yeah. sustained right after they signed him. I mean, he could have been Hogan big. Yeah. Do you do you think you could have seen him wearing the WWF title? Oh, easily. He, he, he was that he popular that and hole. just to put the belt on him. That was something that Vince did a lot in the 80s and 90s. You go buy out these territories, you took their top stars, well, yeah. to keep all of their fans and their television audience coming over to cable to watch you, you needed to put that strap on their top guy, at least for a little while, just yeah. to make sure you secured that fan base. Because you had a lot of people that were still kind of rebelling against WWF at the time. They yeah. would get mad that their local TV show, their local wrestling show was gone. But then when they started seeing their stars on WWF, now WWF started to grow into the behemoth that it was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a absolutely. And then, uh, like right now, I'm watching the old school, like WWF. Like I'm doing Raw from '98. So yeah. basically, that belt that I just have, that's still like a thing. You know what I mean? So I'm doing like Stone Cold against Dude Love at Over the Edge, and it's like we're watching that stuff. Man, what a time to be alive! Dude, you like, want to yeah. talk about a fire pay per view? We were on the ECW trip a minute ago. I've got it on DVD here. Find it. Watch Heat Wave '98. Yes. One of the best start yes! to finish wrestling pay per views yes! in the history of pro wrestling. Are you Wave 98. Love that, Masato uh, Tanaka and Mike fucking awesome. Bro. Oh, hold on. You said you were there? No, I was not there. Oh, I, was not, oh, I got a DVD. Bro, Dan's already losing the DVD shit. Here. <laughs> my, hold on, hold on, hold on. My favorite match on that card, possibly my favorite match in ECW is RVD and Sabu versus Hayabusa and Jinsei Shinzaki on that card. Thank you very that much. Was, oh, I, I'm, I'm, Nick knows this. Joey knows this. I am such a Hayabusa mark. It's unbelievable. I would have relinquished control of my left testicle to be live at that show. Dude, <laughs> you are not lying. Because who, um, who headlined that show? Was that Taz and Bam Bam Bigelow for the Taz uh, and Bam Bam yeah, was the headliner. Yeah. Where that's when they went through the ramp. Yes. Yeah. I say Masato, Tanaka, Mike, awesome. The Shinsei, Sanzaki. There it is. There it is. Do it. Do it I mean, Nick. that card start to finish. Absolutely incredible. We'll just do the rest of the show like this. You know what oh, I mean? man. It only, makes, it only makes sense. See, that's what I should have did for the show. Yeah. That's what I should have did. And see, this that's right the cool here. thing, man. You go back and you compare the eras like in, in the WWF, WWE. Okay, you had the golden era when I was coming up. Hulk yeah. Hogan, Hacksaw, Jim Duggan, Macho Man, all those guys. Then you went to the Attitude Era. Then you came around to the PG Era. The Attitude Era, of course, ruled by Stone Cold and The Rock. What? PG Era, John Cena was the king of that. But you know who was in all of them? And he was kind of the cornerstone that held it all together, a star Undertaker. through it all? Freaking Undertaker, man. All Undertaker. four of them. Undertaker was there for all of it. You... You will rest in peace. I can't oh, yeah. My Undertaker. Yes! Oh, yeah. <laughs> the fact I, my voice is like coming in and out. So, so you're so, making me. This is so a, bit, Dynamite, a good episode. I'm a lot older than you think. Okay. Oh, boy. So this, this was my very first wrestling event. 1989. My man. Good so, year. So. I still, I don't remember <laughs> any of the undercard. I was only three years old. <laughs> the, the, the thing that I remember the most was I got to see in the main event was Hulk Hogan versus the big boss For man there. in the blue rod iron steel cage. I will never forget that. The, at that time, obviously, you didn't have the big ty pyrotechnics. It was literally the ring in the middle, smoky-ass arena with one light over the ring. Yep. I still remember that. I will cherish this ticket stub. Dude, tickets, this ticket was $11. 
It started a little smaller with me. There's a small town out here called LaRonger, Louisiana. There was an old dirt track where they raced the dirt track racing. You'd go oh, out there Lord. on Friday night, <laughs> and then on Saturday night, they had this little building that would hold about 1,500, 2,000 people, and yeah. Mid-South Wrestling would come. So you go see wow. the Junkyard Dog, Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Every once in a while, you'd have a bigger guy come through. That was my first introduction to wrestling. Then, of course, you started watching old television, and when the big show, WWF, would come, to say New Orleans or something like that, you would go check it out. And then, like, at the time, it wasn't Hacksaw Jim Duggan. It was Hacksaw Jim Dugan. 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 Dude, yeah, that's when you know you're old school. A whole bar in Slidell one night. We had just done a OWE, Old School Wrestling Entertainment show. He was our big ringer. We brought him in. So afterwards, we're hanging out in the bar. And we're sitting there talking. Everybody's, oh, is that y'all Jim Duggan? They're running up talking to him. Well, I'm standing yeah. right next to him. Well, every couple minutes, I'd reach over and I'd kind of jiggle his ass cheek with my left hand. What you <laughs> you look? And I'd just stand there like nothing happened. A few minutes later, I'd reach over and I'd grab his ass again. I'd jiggle his ass cheek. Boy, you see, he's getting mad now. He's starting to look around. <laughs> but the third time I did it, finally, he turns around. I don't know who the son of a bitch. And he started. He was ready to fight the whole bar. I'm like, Axel, Axel, sorry. It was me. You better cut that shit out. I mean, he was hot, buddy. That's awesome. It's mad hell as yeah. hell. Yeah, that's that's freaking awesome, man. I, I wish we would have more story good like wrestling that. stories. As a matter of fact, I'm going to share a personal one. And I promise to a certain individual, I'm not going to mention his name. Well, Preston Bentley, I will say this. Preston Bentley will always have a special place in my heart. And I'm going to say this right now. Three years ago, I want to say it, it, it'll be four in March. So a lot of people may know my mom passed away back in March of uh, 2019. House Party, uh, which was at the time an, uh, an action pack, uh, action pro wrestling show uh, that was in New Iberia. APW. Um, yeah, APW. And basically, yeah. I was scaring it up. I was promoting on Facebook. I'm like, hey, go check out my friends. Hannibal, God rest his soul. He was in a ladder match that I kind of helped. Like, hey. Do a ladder match. That'd be awesome. That'd be great for New Iberia. New Iberia never had a ladder match before. Let's do it. So sure enough, it was him against Cody Hawkins. And that was the one match I was looking forward to the most. Well, tragedy happened. My mom passed away a couple days before the event. Now, Preston would go on Facebook promoting the show. And I'm like, dude, I can't. I can't go. You know what I mean? My mom, my mom passed away. I, I just don't want to be. I just don't want to be anywhere that's social. He texts me. He's like, bro, you got to go. You know what I mean? You, you got to go. And sure enough, that's been one of the, probably one of the best nights of my life. It's easily hands down my favorite wrestling story. I'm not going to go into full detail, but with him and like Mike, uh, Sean, um, so much more. Bobby, beautiful Bobby, all of them. Uh, those guys are, hold a special place in my heart because of that particular moment. It's such a cool moment. Um, and that's what made me love wrestling more. That's what made me love local wrestling more than the actual thing. You know what I mean? Dude, that's why Preston I go... was so talented. He's so talented. He's doing the drumming thing now, you know, playing music full time. And I but told yeah, him, dude, like, the house of Bentley, back. when it was running strong, he was so good at what he did. Yes. I had great charisma with him every time I was in the ring. I mean, we played off of each other a lot, had a lot yes. of fun with it. Good guy think... to work with, man. And personally, I don't think I'll ever be a better manager than him. Big ramp, maybe. Big ramp can hold maybe a candle to him, but I wouldn't say that. Yeah, but Preston had that ability to weave in and out, face, he had heel, that, face, heel. You yeah. know, big ramp, big ramp's awesome. Big ramp's heel. That's all right. you're getting out He's of big heel. ramp, heel. You're not getting face out of big ramp. No. With Preston, you could you could kind of go either way. But with Preston, it's like he kind of gave him that Jimmy Hart vibes. And I'm not talking about Jimmy Hart from like back in the day. I'm talking about Jimmy Hart from like the 80s, 90s, WCW type of <laughs> Jimmy Hart. That's how I feel about him. And it's like, dude, I loved it. I absolutely, <coughs> excuse me. I absolutely loved it. And that's what made me fall in love with his character, his manager. And that's why I always say he's my favorite manager of all time. Then I have to be like, and I tell Mustang all the time, it's like, hey, you bringing out Jimmy Hart, right? That'd be cool. If you, if, that'd be awesome if you ever do. But don't tell Preston that Jimmy Hart's my favorite manager of all time. And not him. So, yeah. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not trying to get a little emotional. Um, I'm just sick. But that's one of my favorite wrestling stories of all time. 
And the night that David Silver passed away, like we all kind of got together, took an amazing pick. Myself, him, Hannibal, Bobby, David, all of them. Um, super cool dudes. You know what I mean? And that's what made me fall in love with the sport that we're in to the point that we have a podcast dedicated to that. We have a podcast, not just talking about wrestling, but also MMA, video games, music, whatever, whatever the case may be. That's what we want to do. And that's, you know, that was one of the things. And I would love to have him on the show. Like he was one of the very first guys I wanted to have on the show. You know what I mean? And it's last like, time I bumped into him, I was doing a bodybuilding show in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, and he was playing at a place called AJ Seafood Bar Grill. So I went and saw his band play that night. We hung out, had a few beers, and that's the last time I bumped into Preston. Well, last time and I ran to him a year ago, I think. Last time I ran to him was last year, last Cajun Heat when he did the stuff with with uh, with with Rocket. Which, dude, that dude, that's another one, another. Great, great talent was Rocket. Rocket was, in my opinion, a once in a lifetime type of type of character. Like he did the whole Reverend Rocket thing. Like that was just absolutely ah, spicy meat the ball. Such a good stuff. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, Rocket was one of the first guys I met when I first started doing some yeah. of the indie wrestling stuff. Dude, and been with me since day one. So yeah, great guy, love <laughs> Rocket. Well, before before we wrap I was so up, glad that I was able to put him in the Hall of Fame there at GSW. Yeah, at that was a good moment. That was Once cool again, for me. Cajun Heat of this year. I think by far we could do both- TLC in a freaking steel cage, Bruh. Mike about White to get on that, on that about wobbly to get on bastard. That. <laughs> I, how he didn't die, I don't know, dude. Bro, like we were literally right there, myself, Robbie, and Davy. We were literally right freaking there. And I mean, like seeing that was it twelve foot, eighteen foot? I think it was freaking huge. It was up there. I I was worried for Mike for a second. I didn't think he, he had the ball to do it when he first got up. You saw how wobbly it was. It was sketchy at first. I'm yeah, like, man, man, this ain't gonna be good. I can see Mike being like, "Yeah, we ain't having no more cage matches after this." But sure enough, oh my man delivered. And I mean, the video that I have on my phone does not does not do justice. The the whole crowd lost it, and I, it was, and for once we had a holy shit chant. Uh, like, I, yes, I, we did. I've seen you've posted the video before. And I could say it was pretty. It was, looked pretty cool. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and then like we had another cage match. Follow that, which was Mustang Mike and Gil Casey. You're brand new, by the way, brand new GSW World Champion, Mister Mad Dog Gil Gacy. Um, which I'm definitely excited for because he's he definitely deserves it. But and see, another one, Gil started out in the world of MMA. Gil was an MMA promoter for a lot yeah. of years when his fourth first time going before he got into a pro wrestling a good bit. I've known Gil for a long, long time. Yeah. And I mean, Rob, my, speaking of Robbie, that's Robbie right there. That match was freaking awesome. Like, to say that I've experienced both a TLC match and a cage match at the same time, dude, that's, 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 that's a once in a lifetime thing. Like, I feel like that, that type of match needs to happen more often. But I mean, dude, nothing could top that. You know what I mean? Like no, that, that whole show was for an indie wrestling show. That was just over, bro. The it was top, over man. the top, over the top. <laughs> Definitely. And we can go on and on and on about this, about the show. Cause the show was amazing. The people were just as amazing as the show was like myself and Davey. I mean, Davey dressed up as Guile from street fighter. Yeah. You guys were pimped out to the max. Then we had a, a local high school football up, team there. They yeah. were running wild. Like, between all those things, like everybody was stopping to get pictures with me and Dave, like sh- straight up. And it's like, I looked at Dave and said, Dave, how you liked your first show, bro? How you liked it? Bro, it was absolutely awesome. Oh my God. And Dave is like our media manager because, like, he'll promote all the this, all this shit for Mortal K Fame. He's like, bro, I'm not that much into wrestling, right? I don't know wrestling, but I know you're like, oh, Stonecast Dave Austin. He did a Stone Cold Steve Austin impression. You're Stonecast Dave Austin and you see him, Pucks. But bro, that man, that was a hell of a show, and it's like you know to have him do that as a guy who doesn't know anything about wrestling, to have him come to a wrestling show, probably the biggest wrestling show in Louisiana of the year. Man. Definitely was. It, yeah, it that really says was. something when you can convert somebody that's not a wrestling yes. fan into a wrestling fan. That speaks volumes. That's one of the main reasons why I wanted. Dynamite to be on the show because I've been waiting to let this mother effer out, bro. Because it was a wild night of hooking and jabbing, scooping and slapping, banging, <laughs> and banging at the Morgan City Auditorium. Cajun Heat Five was wild, wooly, live, large, and in fucking charge. It was badass. 
Hell yeah. See, that's the energy I, I, I missed. I missed that Saturday. And you know what I mean? But Spencer did a good job. I, I will give it to him. <laughs> uh, go check him out. He, he has his own podcast called The Last Match Standing that's, that's uh, available in YouTube and all podcast streaming platforms. So, yeah. Um, they're really cool dudes, by the way. Spencer, Paul, and, and the other guy. Yeah, the Last Match Standing. They do a good job, man. They, they do really a really good job. It. They do good commentary. They're, they're fun yes. to listen to. They were there for Cajun Heat. They did the yes, commentary for Cajun Heat. And I they mean, did commentary for the uh, the the uh, Red Stick WrestleCon show as well. I forgot about that. Yeah. I they did that. See, I wasn't paying that much attention because... So, here's a little funny story. So that you don't remember me jumping in the car with you in the parking lot before we even went into the damn show, do you? Exactly. Exactly. I pull up. I'm getting out, getting ready to go in, yes, start getting dressed bro, and everything. God, I'm yeah, that. dude, you're right. I parked right I'm next to you. I'm like, fucking Nick Vodra. What's up, dude? Like, I have a whole, like, Eddie Guerrero shirt on, bro. Like, I was rocking this shit. So, yeah. So, as we're leaving the show, after I got my picture with you, uh, along with Puff, some people came by after you left, right? It was like a family of like three or four. And we're like, hey, excuse me, mister. Mister. I'm like, yeah, what's up? Would you mind signing my poster? Like, what? Whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You want me to sign the poster? And the parents are like, yes, please. He wants you to sign the poster. I looked at I looked at my buddies. I'm like, you want me to sign the poster? Yeah, bro, go right ahead. All right, cool. Nick Boudreaux. Whee! That was it. Like I literally had my very first signed autograph. Like I signed somebody's poster. And, and that's then, a moment you'll never forget. I still and, remember my first one, man. Bro, and it's like fast forward to like the following weekend. We had uh that show in March. We had that wrestling show, right? Mm -hmm. But you wasn't there. I think Bryce was there. Yeah. Uh Somebody came up to me with a baseball cap. Bro, can you sign my baseball cap? Somebody come up to me, hey, bro, can you sign my baseball card? Like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, the nah. Morgan City shows, man. Now, ah. you, now you need to get a, uh, a Polaroid camera and uh, charge charge a feast for photos. Yeah. I, I've yet to get a, a, a prosthetic boot signed. <laughs> Waiting for that to happen. That's when you know. That's when you know you made it in the career once you sign a prosthetic uh, limb. Yeah, I've yeah. never done that. I've, I've signed the titty before, but I've never done a prosthetic. I'm about to say, limb. what was the craziest thing you've ever signed? That that would be it right there. <laughs> Old the titty. Oh, bro, that's awesome. So let me ask you this: I know you do MMA, right? What was your crowning moment in MMA, as announcing wise, career wise? <laughs> I guess one of my biggest moments, uh, man, God, there's been so many guys. I mean, I've been doing this 16 years. I've done 243 MMA events. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, I've done, good Lord, probably 25, 30 boxing events. Uh, let's see. You know, my first MMA event ever was pretty damn big for me. I'm a huge LSU fan, LSU Tiger fan. And the first one I ever did back in 2007 – we had Sean the Savage Jordan was coming out to fight that night, and he was in the main event fighting Scott Barrett. Well, Sean had just graduated in 2007. They okay. had just won the national championship. So here I am, my first time ever doing an MMA event. I'm standing in the cage. Here comes Sean Jordan. I'm like, dude, that's a national champion LSU Tiger. And he's got the whole damn football team walking him out to the cage. Dwayne Bo, early deuce set. I mean, you name it, the whole FN championship team. That's and I'm cool. just in the center of the cage. I'm still in awe from announcing for the first time that night and just – Oh, oh, you know, everybody but Les Miles was there, dude. I just, I was marking out so bad trying to keep myself under, you know, kind of cool composure. Yeah. I've uh, did a show where John Jones was there hanging out with us. I've introduced Matt Hughes before. Okay, Jones. <laughs> yeah, man, John Bones Jones, Harris Casino in New Orleans, dude. So yeah, I've, I've had a lot of big ones in there, dude. A lot, a oh. lot of big. Okay, so you mentioned Matt Hughes, right? Fucking love Matt Hughes. Matt Hughes is one of my all-time favorite uh, UFC yeah. fighters. I heard he had some type of condition now. Matt got hit by a train. Yeah. A yeah. Train. No yeah. shit. Yeah, train, he was in his car and got hit by a train. Yes, and Matt is incredible. The recovery that he's had, his speech, he struggles with that Damn. just a little bit because we bring him in from time to time, my company, a.k.a. American Combat Alliance, and we'll have him do commentary for our pay-per-views and such. We've had him with us. We were on UFC Fight Pass, and it, 
walking. He, he does fine, but he's still, you, you see, there's a little wobble to the walk now, but man, just still so full of life, so full of energy. And I mean, he is such a card to be around yeah. and strong as an ox still. I mean, I like- walk around around two fifteen. And yeah, he snatched me up with one arm. It seemed like at one of our weigh-ins one time. I'm like, dude, you got to put me down, brother. <laughs> well, it's like I watched him in AEW. I think it was an AEW episode, and it's like, man, something was off about him. And I had texted the guys. I'm like, hey, you don't know anything about, about Matt Hughes? And that's when Joey was like, uh, he has some type of condition or something like that where he could barely walk. And I mean, it's just yeah, he got hit by a train. That's man. crazy, like say, dude. To walk away from that, dude, absolutely incredible but yeah he did well uh real quick as about to go in our second uh our second break uh and after the break we'll wrap things up but uh but yeah i i definitely enjoy matt hughes have you ever had a favorite like mma fighter ever in your career yeah my favorite mma fighter anderson the spider silver oh anderson silver man Okay, now, I mean, Matt I've Hughes. got a lot of favorites, don't get me wrong, but Anderson the Spider Silva, definitely 100%. Dude's a hell of an athlete. Favorite. I will say that. Dude's a hell of an athlete. But I have to go with the one, the only, GSP, George St. Pierre. Well, the man you see in the photo with me right there, handing him his ass twice. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. I still, think, I still think one of the best fight promotions in the whole world, well, at the time, was Pride. I'm Bro. going back. To, I'm I'm going back through Pride Fighting Championships right now. Such a great promotion. Didn't that have look, Dana pro- White mimicked what Vince McMahon did a lot in his approach to growing the brand of UFC? Oh yeah. When Vince was growing the WWF, he would go to all the local territories. He'd buy you up, buy you all your video footage. He would take the couple top stars he wanted. Everything else was gone. Dana yeah. White did the same thing. He took the UFC. They bought out Strike Force. They bought out Pride. They bought out WEC. I used to love WEC, World yeah. of Steel Cage Fighting, with yeah. the blue mat where Uriah Faber came from. Love that promotion. And that's what UFC would do. They would buy out their competition, get all their video library, and then the four or five top stars they knew they really wanted, they would sign them the contracts. I mean, he followed what Vince McMahon did with the WWF in the 80s. Very, very similar with growing the UFC brand. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I uh, Really quick before we go on break, I waited in line for 13 hours to meet Uriah Faber, and it was worth it. <laughs> Uriah Faber, the California Dude, kid. He's so small. Like, you have no idea until you meet this dude in person. He is so small. Oh, yeah. But uh, you want to go ahead and take this break before it cuts us off again? Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's take one more break, and we'll wrap it up. We'll be right back. Same Dyna time, same Dyna channel. As we uh, wind down a little bit. Dude, this has been a hell of a good episode, by the way. Yeah, this, was, this one's been fun.
We are back. And we are back. That's right. We're live, large, and in charge with the often imitated but never duplicated. Latest and greatest, longest and strongest, always fresh and never frozen. Dynamite David Hardy. I love this. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Hey, Dynamite, how much you like to be our host for the show? Uh, you know, just do, just do the intros for what I came from now. I'll be joking, bro. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it's go time. Woo! Bro, I love that. That that always tickles me when you do that. And then it's like you do like the whole Michael Buffer thing. Not Michael Buffer, uh, Bruce Buffer. Bruce Buffer. They can both kiss my time. ass. Michael okay. Buffer, Bruce Buffer, no love but lost between us. Bro, Michael Buffer tried to sick his lawyers on me one time. No! Uh, they really? can go to hell. They can bite my dynamite ass. Damn. Wow, yeah, both. What, were they trying to say, like, copyright infringement? <laughs> yes, Michael Buffer has about 14 different patents with the United States Patent Office. Everybody knows you can't say, let's get ready to rumble. That's his stuff. Well, I would always start my shows. I would do a big... Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, the officials are ready. The fighters are ready. Yep. I ask you now, what city are you? And I'd do a big 360 lean back ready. The crowd would go nuts. Well, right. I was um, UFC Fight Pass put me on Twitter, on their Twitter page. Got about 90,000 views in 24 hours. Went viral. I was pretty proud of it. Well, lo and behold, I get served with legal papers. Michael Buffer has a patent for a call to battle on the words, are you ready? What? So you can't say, are you ready as a ring announcer either? A lot of guys do it. He don't give a shit because they're not going anywhere. But when I got uh, went viral and there was UFC fighters sharing my shit left and right, one of them shared it to Bruce Buffer himself. And when he got to Bruce, lo and behold, the next day I got served with legal papers. Bro. So yeah, the buffers can go. On. Yeah, no. And the thing was, no I was going to say, no I was going to say, uh, they, they, they ain't shit compared <laughs> to you. I was going to put you over like Rover. But the thing was, <laughs> Before we wrap things up, I was going to say this. If you would have came to this past Saturday, I would have got a lot of people doing, oh, is he the dynamite? Oh, is he the dynamite? Because it's like you come over here, you come to Market City, you amp us up. You know what I mean? And that's what and that's what we need. We need a ring announcer. And you don't see that often. You don't see a ring announcer hyping people up. And it's well, like, that was something, man, when I first started doing this, right. you, the, a ring announcer is supposed to be heard, not seen. And right. I just always had it in me. I like to entertain. I like to cut up in front of the crowd. I said, you know what? I'm going to be atypical. I'm going to be everything that a ring announcer is not supposed to be. I'm going to get out there and I'm going to I'm going to have some star power. Just the, the hell with it. That's what it's going to be. And I came up into the nickname Dynamite, walking out the theme music, confetti cannons, got dynamite. I mean, look, it's on the sleeve of my jacket right yep. here there I've it got is. it monogrammed on the back of my tuxedos and yeah i mean i get out there guys you go to my youtube page check out some of the goofy shit i've done i've done full-on dance numbers to red food from lmfao in front of 2,000, 2,500 people on a worldwide Bro. pay-per-view yeah dude i mean i I'm bring just... the show as best i can because when somebody comes to an event i'm hosting you're spending your hard-earned money to come watch an MMA show, to come watch a boxing show, to come watch a wrestling show. All right. Sometimes the, the fights aren't as good as you thought they were going to be. Sometimes the, the matches aren't as good as you were thought they were going to be. And if nothing else, if I can get the, the crowd hyped up into that fever frenzy to where they're having a good time and they're just enjoying themselves, then man, I just feel like you got your money's worth. Not and plus, I get a wrestling show. If you get the fans hyped up and get them into it, then when the guys come out to perform, man, I've got the crowd red hot for you. Now, all you got to do is go out there and do your stuff. And man, it makes it so much easier for the wrestlers as well, because I get the crowd whipped up. I get them hyped, get them at a feaser frenzy. And then when the stars they paid money to come see come out now, man, they're ready. So it makes it easier for the guys to get out there and get the crowd into what the stories they're telling as well. And not to mention the fact, uh, not to cut you off, but not to mention the fact that I'm waiting for you to come out with the Dynamite Girls instead of the Nitro Girls. Dynamite Girls for uh, for GSW. So I may have to mic on that one. Anyway. Um, you might be on so, something there, kid. <laughs> 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 so anyway, as you're winding down, I'm going to uh, send it over to Dan to do the outro because he wants to do it. He's, <laughs> he did the intro. Dude, you might as well. Take it away, bro. Dan the man. All right, guys. Well, unfortunately, we have reached that point of the show where we have to say goodbye. <laughs> so uh, on behalf of Dan the Man, Staggered, 
Lee Crocker, the venomous one, Nick Venom. God damn, I'm fucking this up. Click. And our special guest, David Hardy, got the doors open for you. Go. Ladies and gentlemen, we have everybody here at the World of Cafe. My name is Dynamite saying thank you all so much for coming out. God bless you and good night. And- gentlemen, as you know, the ultimate warrior. Nice Fuck it. It's publicly stated that. Damn it, who put that up? Is that $200 an hour? That's all. Oh, me gusta.